Hello, hi everyone. Uh, good morning and good day. And welcome back uh, to this foundation for uh, preaching and teaching. Uh, we'll continue our lesson. This will be lesson number three, the week week number three and uh, this is where we left off uh, last week and we are talking about uh, let's see a bigger picture so before we go into the details of or the most specific specifics of uh, teaching and preaching we want to see where it fits in Christian work or Christian life or Christian ministry for the sake and uh, we read uh, these uh, Bible verses and uh, there are basically three uh, teaching contexts that we can think of the house or home and the church and school and then uh, related uh, major topics would be understanding communication to understand the preaching and uh, and uh, teaching and we'll, we'll look into the Jesus as the preacher and Jesus as the teacher this will come in the later uh, lessons and uh, begin. You should begin with the question: Who, who, who am I, and uh, why am I here, and what God wants me to do in this life? So that would be the basic, the primary, fundamental question anyone should ask. And uh, if, if you're especially, if you're a minister uh, or the one who's called to preach and teach uh, these Christian disciples and you are you are to ask these very key questions and okay and suggested the basic framework uh, for uh, life itself as a, as a Christian and there's a being part and doing part and by doing something you reveal who you are and as as you do and practice and make uh, corrections and make mistakes and uh, uh, and get mature it's becoming and then we have uh, something called the reality that is given even though not all the reality is favorable uh, or 100% perfect uh, you have to live with it that's that's life and the much of it uh, how you live your existence the second line your existence will be determined determined by your own belief whatever the uh, belief is it could be your ideology as, as a socialist it could be your uh, philosophy as a pessimist whatever that belief is but us as believers uh, the, the Christian belief or biblical faith would be our way of looking at the reality and bring out the existence that will be relevant and valid to your own belief and then there's a church and the world you have to understand the church and the surrounding world there are two different realities in this world as as of as a of Christians so reality called the church that is a that is under God's authority and then the reality that is called the world uh, that is not under God's authority or they do not know God so that's two different realities and the kingdom of God kingdom of God is a, the ultimate that's coming uh, kingdom then we came to this 
particular subject last week. And there are two uh, different uh, ideas about the Christians who are mature. So leadership, either whether it's leadership or stewardship, it has to do with the, your maturity as a Christian and as a person. Some people believe or think, at least think, the uh, the the Christian maturity and personal maturity will be two different things. I do not believe so. If you if if someone says you're mature as a Christian and if you're not mature as a as a person that doesn't make sense it goes together if you are mature as a Christian you you, you should be mature as a person so someone with a bad personality and being a good Christian that's no no uh, it doesn't make sense so the teaching and preaching is a part of part of leadership and is part of stewardship and uh, not just a part of it it's one of the key key functions key functions as a, a believer who has been called so this leadership and stewardship actually it always has to do with your calling so that we come to the second topic of the call and the calls the call the call with the the in front that's gonna be initial calling in a Christian context within the Christian context there are two different callings as a believer as a believer or as believers so that means every Christian should go through these two different callings the call first call the initial call has to do with God calling you to become his child his child you were lost we were lost I was lost meaning I, I wasn't connected with God I had no relationship with God I was against God and I was sinning sinning against God so your sin is not knowing God it's not ethical things or lies or uh, murder or hate these things comes as the result of the sin there's the sin as some some say it's original sin but I don't use that language uh, it's the, the sin with the big letter and the singular S I N so capital S I N sin would be the sin which is not having that personal connection with God the thing is God has not he did not abandon you or me but it is us me and you who had decided to leave leave God for my own desire own greed own selfishness own self-centeredness that's what happened so we say I, I don't need you God I, I'm gonna leave you I'm gonna live live without you so that's what we did but God said after all come back please I'll forgive you uh, if if you confess if you say sorry if you say confess that uh, acknowledge that you are a sinner says God and then so he cannot just accept us uh, so he he has to make something uh, the process uh, and uh, have to deal with the sin and uh, he, he he planned the, the Jesus Christ the Messiah in between me and God so the call has to do with the calling me to come back to have that relationship personal connection back again with 
the God, because God is personal God. Well, the Christian God, the biblical God, is a personal God who feels, who loves, who who get gets angry against the sin, and uh, it's just God is has all this personal quality, just as much as uh, we are, or much more, much more than us, because we have been taken in the following the image of God so we are made in the image of God the call so that calling you to be a believer to be a Christian to come back and become his child and come back into the into his his arms his dom dominion his dominion and his authority and his love so that's the call and we either answer that call or we don't. We don't. So the, any teacher or preacher, if you are to be a Christian teacher and Christian preacher, the call is the, the necessity. It's, it's a mandatory. It is a must. So that's very first qualification for any teacher any minister and any Christian for the matter it doesn't make you a Christian because you attend a church or if you attend church every Sundays that doesn't make you, you automatically a Christian uh, it may it may make you a church member but that doesn't mean that you are registered in the heavenly church the earthly church is just just human organization the only thing that validates validates you as uh, God's uh, genuine child is when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and the Lord and as the very only one Son of God who has been sent to die for our sins to take that that heavy responsibility of sin on his shoulder and to the cross that's what Jesus did and without believing that without acknowledging that to be true that uh, that he has been resurrected that Jesus has been resurrected to to prove indeed that he is the very son of God and he overcame the death the eternal death so that's how we become a believer, a Christian, a church member, the, the genuine church member, the invisible uh, universal Catholic Church. Not the Catholic Church or Roman Catholic Church, but the, the, the Catholic Church, the Christian biblical church. So the call is very key and uh, that's very the essence of being a, a teacher and preacher. Another, the second call. Second calls, or the calls, the, with the S at the end of it, C-A-L-L-S, the um, calls. These, uh, these vary from individual to individual. See, the call is the same for any, all Christians. But calls are different one. You can be called to be a doctor you can be called to be a mother or father you can be called to be an engineer or you can be called to be a minister pastor missionary and preacher and teacher so the Bible says not all believers do have the same calling or same uh, the mandate or same stewardship responsibility so every single believer has different design or plan of God so God had planned you to be something and it's, it's not like a playing a uh, playing a quiz you don't have to struggle to find out what God wants no 
God simply, very easily, once you become a believer, He gives the, you know, the heart and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit works with you to be able to find what am I going to do with this, this life that is given as a believer. So you, you should live a, a personal life as a Christian. I mean, you do the devotions, you read the Bible, you try to become mature, more sanctified, you try to do away with uh, the, 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 the uh, sins and uh, those, there are those sins that you commit every day and still uh, cannot, uh, you know, get rid of it. And still you struggle, continue to struggle. But still, at the same time, God wants you to do or work as a believer. In some, some churches, in some denominations, they believe the only pastor or missionaries are good job. And other jobs are called secular jobs. I don't believe so. Any, any work that you do would be blessed or anointed by the Holy Spirit. And uh, it is not job itself, whether you're a doctor or you're do doing the cleaning in, in, a, in a hotel, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As long as you're not doing something that's illegal or unhealthy or uh, the, uh, harmful to, to other human beings, any jobs, any uh, legal and acceptable jobs that you do on earth, that will be worth and uh, God is going to bless it. So, you know, well, the question is, what am I best? What do I like best? And what do I do best? So these two categories are important. So the question, do you like a preaching? Do you like a teaching? Yeah, I like it. I like it. I love it. Then you don't have to be too good at it. I mean, you can teach at any level. You can preach at any level. So the first question is, do you like it? Do you love it? And uh, do you believe that God has called you to be a teacher? And do you, do you, do you believe that God has called you, you to be a preacher? And the answer is, if you love it and if you do it well, you don't have to be excellent or top of the, uh, the, the 1%. Uh, no, you don't need to be that. I mean, if you are willing to communicate and share the Word of God, so you can help them to grow and mature as a believer and Christian, then you are qualified to be a teacher and preacher. So for me, the most important thing is the desire and the desire and the motive. Why, why are you trying to, to preach and to teach? If it's, a, it's a, out of an obligation, uh, you have to think twice. If you do it for the money, that's, that's not a good qualification. I mean, that's actually a bad qualification. Uh, you're not called. If you are called, called by God to be a preacher and teacher, you do know. You do know. There's no question about it. Uh, you, you, you don't need to be confused. And uh, you, don't, you, you don't struggle to find out if, if I am called to be a preacher and teacher. No. Uh, you, you will know because God wants to, he, he does, He does make sure that you understand that your calling is a preacher and a teacher. So for me, uh, that happened around the, by the uh, senior year of my uh, uh, college years. So I was in a senior, senior year, just uh, before the graduation. 
I, I just uh, found out that God had called me to be a, a full-time uh, minister, uh, full-time minister, meaning, I mean, uh, vocational minister and full-time minister are two different things. Sometimes it goes together, sometimes it's two different things. Uh, but at least I, I was called to be a full-time uh, minister, minister, meaning that whatever I do, whatever I do, I, I was to do live 100% for His kingdom, His glory, His, 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 His cause, God's cause. So once you have that, that calling, then God will let you know what specific uh, particular uh, location or kind of jobs or kind of work that you want to do. And uh, for me, it was uh, being a, a, a minister uh, for, the, for the college students. So that was my calling. And uh, so you need to say yes to these two, uh, two, two questions. Did, have you, uh, you, do you have the call, the call? to be a Christian, to be, to be his child, and have you answered that, to, that yes? So that another, another way of addressing that question is, are you a, a genuine believer, the Christian? Are you a genuine Christian? That should be, answer should be yes, to, to be a preacher and teacher. Then second call, did, did God call you to be a preacher? or a teacher or and a teacher uh, you can be a teacher and not a preacher but you 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 if you're a preacher then you are a teacher as well because the pastors or the pastors two main things that you do uh, on the pulpit just like this one on the podium uh, another way of podium is to preach and to teach the words of God who God is, you share the knowledge and, and then you try to communicate and help them to understand who God is, what His plan is, how to live as a believer and so on. These are the major topics for preachers and teachers. So I want you to confirm that. And uh, when you are called to a particular job, or specific job then it is called a mandate mandates are God these are God given God given I mean you 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 if you're self designate the preacher or teacher I, I wouldn't call it a mandate a mandate should come from the above above so you make sure that you have called, uh, you have the calling, calling as a teacher and preacher. And that calling, you're, you're preaching and teaching, that, that responsibility becomes mandate. Mandate meaning something that has to be done. It's obligation and it's a duty and it's a responsibility and it's lifelong thing. So usually more, most mandates, not all of them though, but most mandates remain through your lifetime. So for me, my mandate is to teach and preach and to help out to nurture the young, intelligent people like you guys. You have to have a certain aptitude of knowledge certain ability to do do some academic uh, process not all people are that intelligent i'm not i'm not trying to say intelligent people are better people no that's not the case that's never the case in the bible uh, god makes some people more intelligent than others and uh, being uh, being intelligent, intelligent or intellect, intellectual in Christian context is not something that you boast about. 
as as your your response responsibility because the bible says if you are given more more god is going to ask more of you so if you have given some inter intellectual uh, ability or intelligence uh, the good brain in the word if you have given a good brain god is going to ask you to do something with that good uh, brain so if you are studying in a college level just like uh, ours today that you have given more than others and you have the resources to pay for the tuition you have the time to study and uh, listen to the lectures and uh, do homeworks and so on that is privilege privilege not everyone can do it even if someone wants to do it they may not able to do it because they do not have the money resources or they don't have time to study because they have to earn uh, the, the bread to live they have uh, you know family to feed and then they are not able to do that and you you guys are not just uh, lucky it is it is a part opportunity opportunity for you to to grow and equip equip meaning that you provide yourself with all the you know possible skills and uh, knowledge and uh, experience so you can work uh, that's equipping so I'm here to help you to be equipped as a Christian uh, preacher and uh, teacher so this class is aiming you to help you to carry out carry out your mandate so that means you are responsible for to be a teacher that's that's a privilege but it's not something to you boast about because you're a teacher or preacher you don't don't think that you're above the people the students that you're teaching or preaching some preachers some preachers sadly when they preach they think they are above their uh, the, uh, the the congregation's head they think they are better person no actually they are not they are not no one is better than others no one is better than others except Jesus Christ the Messiah the Lord except him everyone is the same even though we may have a little different ability and and the uh, background and the resources that doesn't make you a better person that's that's very Christian uh, teaching and idea and uh, that's how God thinks of us God does not look at you with the favorable eyes because you are rich or you have good uh, family background no that that uh, there will not be the case that that's that's has never been the case in the Bible so everyone under the Sun we are the same uh, if you're a believer you're different from non-believer that's that's the only thing that differentiate uh, us and uh, within within Christian church the all the believers are the same even though we may have different functions different level of responsibilities that doesn't make you a better person than, than others so we have something called a vocational calls vocational calls so God wants you us to live doing something called job or vocation or profession or career whatever people name it you have to I mean you are called to be a something teacher business person doctor or uh, housewife 
Okay, there are some distinctions within the, uh, this Christian vocation. Uh, we'll talk about the Christian jobs. Either you, you can be paid or volunteers. So, I mean, uh, you can preach and teach as volunteers. Most uh, Sunday school teachers are volunteers. They are not paid even though pastors are paid because most pastors they do have uh, appropriate training just professional actually professional training to become uh, a pastor a minister of a church and some some countries require a license to be a pastor and uh, because of the separation of the state and the church in America, the, the the government would not, you know, uh, validate license for the pastors. But denominations, each denomination, have their own system to uh, authorize and validate a pastor. Uh, and uh, if you have uh, that professional training, if you have spent this, uh, time and money, uh, uh, the seminary and if your call is to become a full-time and paid uh, pastor then you are called to be a paid pastor but there are also who is not being paid even though they have some professional training and the license and all those authorities they choose not to be paid by the church and then you become a, a volunteer pastor. So that will be the case. And uh, most uh, teachers, Sunday school teachers, are they are, they are uh, volunteers. But if you get, go to Christian private schools, uh, many there are many Christian private schools in America. And uh, th in those schools, the teachers are just paid uh, as, as, as much as some other teachers are paid in a public school. So those are the paid teachers. So I want to make you that distinction. Then you could be full-time or part-time, depending on how, how many hours that you're spending in preaching and teaching. Then it does require formal training for you to be a, a ordained pastor. But in Baptist uh, tradition, uh, this uh, Southern Baptist tradition, uh, the congregation can anoint, anoint a, a pastor or preacher who does not have any formal training. So the formal training is not a requirement for some of those uh, churches, but most denominations and churches, they require you to be to have a formal training in seminary. Uh, in seminary, usually, uh, it, it is after four years of college, then you have three years or more uh, seminary training. So that's like a formal training that is necessary to be a professional uh, preacher and sometimes professional teacher. Uh, of course, a teacher, to, to be a teacher in a Christian uh, private school, then you need a certain requirement. You, there is a certain requirement you to graduate uh, from a, a certain uh, college or university uh, to become a teacher in a, uh, in a school. So that would be the case. So pastor versus teacher. Uh, you can be both and you can be either one of them. But pastor, being a pastor, it automatically and naturally means that you are a teacher as well. So you can be a teacher, not a pastor, but pastor is both preacher and a teacher. So that, that would be the basic concept that we are trying to uh, tackle in this uh, class. Okay, next topic would be preaching and teaching. Uh, I think it's about time to take a break and uh, let's take a short break and I'll come back. Okay.
Okay, let's continue. So preaching and teaching. When we talk about this uh, topic of preaching and teaching within Christian context, the very nature, the essence of preaching and teaching that is interpersonal interpersonal meaning it's not just the exchange of information exchange of information or delivery of information for the sake many teaching and uh, preachings in in past in the past has been just delivery of information regardless of audience how they respond who they are when that happens the message the message it would be I mean it, it may be delivered as just data and information knowledge but it many times will fail to reach the heart of a, a, a person so major goal objective for preaching and teaching both in a Christian context it is to reach the heart of the listeners and to change change within within so it may bring the change we and outside that the behavior thought and the, the 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 speech and so on and then we'll call, change the whole culture so always try to remember the, the job the the thing that you're doing as a preacher and teacher is to reach their heart rather than the head a good teacher whether it's in secular or in a Christian context should try to reach a student's heart see that's what I'm talking about interpersonal not only that the, the means and method the ways ways to to deliver and to communicate that should be also interpersonal to be interpersonal you even though you have the authority as a preacher and teacher that's God given authority that does not mean that you have to be angry authoritarian and uh, fearful and use the down talk kind of language no that's that's not how you do to exercise you is your authority the, the authority is in the message not you so if you teach the, the right message that is from the Bible from the Bible then you are being a you, you are having the authority the biblical authority not human or secular kind of authority so you don't have to be tyrant or speak you know and loud and shout no that doesn't give you anything it's just a, just a noise it can be as calm as You know a child and you you can still communicate with, with a very interpersonal uh, texture so you know it, it is important to have that interpersonal way of communication you respect them and then see try to see every individual as individual they are different no individual 
in, in the congregation or your, your classroom is the same. They have all different needs. Even though they come to the same class or same church, that doesn't mean that you treat them just everyone the same. Yeah, you treat them equal, equal. That means whether they are rich or poor, whether they are well educated or not uh, educated at all, whether they are men or woman, where, whether they are old or young, you treat them equal. They are all children of God. Children of God. For, to, to God. To God's eyes, all of them are very valuable. They are equal, equally precious. Precious. So that's equal, but not the same. Their, their context, their background, their needs, and these are all different. So to be interpersonal, you have to you know, deal with all these differences as well. So that means if the congregation or student body is too large, then you may not be interpersonal at all. Still, you can give the message, but you know, uh, they, they may lose that interpersonal uh, texture and then the taste of it. Number two, item number two, that's very key to understanding the preaching and teaching. It's called edification. Edification is a little different than education. Edification is, uh, is personal in nature. Edification means growing, developing, making it better, And uh, but there is some ethical, spiritual dimension to edification. So when we talk about edific edification in within the Christian context, it's primarily spiritual. A spiritual does not mean that you 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 are uh, aiming at something that's mysterious or you know uh, magical. It, it does include those dimensions, but it's not limited to something that's mystical, mysterious, and supernatural, though it's included. Many uh, Christians today is confused when we are using the word spiritual. For me, uh, spiritual, it means all-inclusive as, a, as a, a, a human being. As a, as a being who does have a spirit in, in the center and the, or a spirit, spirit as a whole. So spirit is the dominant, dominant essence, the ethos of a, a human being and also of the Godhead. So that's, that's uh, the image of God. So we are created, created in the image of God, so we are spiritual beings. So edification, first, it has to do with the spiritual. Other things, soul and the body, and all knowledge, getting knowledge, and being more ethical, and uh, uh, being a better person uh, in all uh, dimension of human existence, that's uh, the goal of edification. So simply, we could say, uh, we're trying to make a better person, better person out of your student or your congregation uh, and uh, uh, the thing only the difference uh, between the secular and the uh, uh, Christian context is uh, uh, within the co Christian context uh, we include the spiritual domain as the as the fundamental and and uh, inclusive and and uh, how do you say the primary uh, goal or objectives. So either whether you're preaching or teaching, our goal as a preacher and, and teacher is to edify a person as God has designed him or her to be. That is a key. 
That is the key for edification. So our job as a teacher and preacher is to see how, what is God's design, God's plan for this particular uh, person that I am teaching and uh, uh, preaching to. It is a very key job for a pastor. Try to remember this. To bring out the best, best out of a person that you are ministering with or dealing with teaching and preaching through the preaching and teaching you try you're trying to bring out the best out of that person you know, as as god had designed them to be so that's edification that we i am talking about so that involves learning process whether you preach or teach as a student and congregation, you're sitting there and listening to your uh, or someone who you're preaching and uh, uh, you're teaching. They process what they are listening and what they are seeing. See, not just listening, but seeing, and they process that, process that, and it becomes a learning experience for them learning experience for them. If that does not happen, your preaching and teaching is not doing the, the job. It's not working. So good preaching and good teaching is, the, is not the performance that you see on the pulpit or, or, or on the uh, podium, but it is, the measurement is did that preaching and teaching change the person that you are trying to change? So, you know, the, those like a TV evangelist and the so-called uh, famous preachers, yeah, it's good to listen to. And uh, the question is, are they just performing? The, do they bring the changes within the congregation or the listeners? Yeah, I, I see many good uh, TV uh, preachers. I mean, I'm not, try, not trying to, you know, degrade them. Uh, yeah, but some of them just doing that for money. Yeah, I, I could see that. I mean, you, you could see that too then use of speech. 90% of preaching and teaching is done in speech. Though, though the communication does not happen by speech alone, there are so many other elements that would affect your speech. But the use of the language and the speech is the, the fundamental uh, for any preacher or teacher. So we need to uh, look at that as well. <coughs> In that sense, teaching is more broader, is, is broader, well, not more broader, is broader than preaching. Because if you're a preacher, teaching is included. Okay? And uh, teaching is more, uh, how to say, general, or is, there are more teachings than preaching. I mean, uh, more teachers than preacher as well. So that's why I, say uh, did that okay we're trying to uh, compare the preacher and teacher so the column first column has to do with the preacher and the second column has to do with the teacher okay so the preacher preaches to the congregation while the teacher teaches students. 
So the relationship between teacher and student, preacher and congregation. The, congre uh, the preacher focuses on the message, the message, while the teacher more deals with the knowledge. So if you're a pastor, you have to do both teaching and preaching. Sometimes you teach the message, sometimes you have to uh, teach, it, teach it the knowledge that, that uh, eventually will help, help, you, uh, help your students or your congregation to understand the message. So knowledge, the biblical knowledge is there to come to the message. And please do not confuse the knowledge is not the message. When Jesus was born, where Jesus was born, how Jesus was born, these are the knowledge. But that, that's not the message. Message is, why is Jesus born? What the birth of Jesus, the Christmas, has to do with you. And when you're trying to reach that content, and when you are teaching that contents, then it becomes preaching. So I'm differentiating very clearly within at least a Christian context, usually within the church, that preaching and teaching will be different in this, this category. The teaching will just provide the knowledge for the for your congregation or your students so they can come to the message. So that means it, it would be difficult, if not impossible, it would be difficult for your congregation to come to the message without having the knowledge or the function of teaching. Yeah, the Holy Spirit can work on your congregation so uh, you know they can come directly to the message uh, without having the knowledge but look at your preaching if you're a preacher even even though you try to just deliver the message in your preaching still your preaching will include a lot of knowledge to support to come to the message the message of the gospel, the Jesus Christ, the kingdom, the Messiah, God's will. These are the message that we are trying to deliver as the preacher. But to come to it, I mean, within, like I say, 30 minutes of preaching or sermon, that you, you have to talk about this knowledge. And so part of your preaching, whether you like it or not, is going to be the teaching as well. So knowledge and the message it is not, you cannot divide them. Still, the preaching usually short and the teaching is longer than uh, uh, preaching. Usually, I mean, not always, but usually that will be the case. So you're teaching in the classroom, uh, whether it's Bible study or uh, Bible seminar, whatever you do, the training, that will be longer, usually an hour or more, while the uh, preaching is, is less than an hour, usually, not always, but usually. Most of churches, preaching is within 30 minutes or so. Then, the, again, preaching aims at your is, uh, at heart at the heart of your congregation while the, uh, the teaching aims at the, the head. That does not mean that teaching is less than preaching because uh, without the, the supporting knowledge, it is difficult to come to the heart. So you have to go through the head and uh, come to heart. That's that's what the Bible says. You you must hear the gospel. Without hearing the gospel, that you cannot come to uh, the conviction uh, of the, uh, the the faith. So to bring the faith, faith happens within your heart. It's not the uh, head, the your faith, 
the belief, so called belief, is in heart, not head. Okay, and let me clear it, uh, clarify this because many, some, some of the believers, uh, the Christians, so called Christians in the church, they accept the knowledge in the, their head, they agree that, but it does not reach their heart. And in that case, uh, I, I wouldn't say that is a faith. Faith. It's, it's just knowledge so but you have to go through that head to reach the heart usually most of the time but the mystery work of the Holy Spirit may just skip this head process and reach the heart but you cannot do that because we are human beings I mean if whatever you're preaching is fabulous, wonderful, beautiful, excellent, doesn't matter. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, that will, then it's not going to happen. So it's only Holy Spirit who can just skip the head uh, stage and reach the heart. Then usually, you, it's not always, but usually the preaching would be monologue. It's done on the podium one direction you're not usually you're not, the congregation is not allowed to ask questions so it's one-way communication while most of the good teachings are dialogue teachers ask questions and the students answer and then there's something called a discussion in the teaching process which is not usually allowed in the preaching so that's how the preaching and the teachings are different. So this is teaching versus uh, preaching while uh, this was teaching and preaching. Preaching and teaching, okay? This preaching versus teaching. Again, preaching versus teaching. Okay, so that kind of, you know, gives you a, a brief idea about what the preaching and teaching that we are trying to discuss so half of the lesson is already given in this uh, you know first uh, lesson so first lesson that we did is a very concentrated form or summarize the summarized form of what we are going to do in the part two and part three so, you, so basically part two and part three uh, except that Jesus as the preacher and Jesus as the teacher that part is teaching the principle of teaching and uh, preaching but other lessons other lessons the, those are more like a skills and uh, how to do it and I'll try to focus on the, the principles because principle does need some explanation elaboration while the, the skills is, is basically the knowledge that you can you 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 have to like put into practice it's, it's simple and it doesn't need uh, much explanation so you can just read it those skill part strategy you can read it and then you you will understand but the principle it does need some explanation okay So we continue going to lesson two of the part one. So this is a very foundation and uh, foundation is uh, important. That's why we spent uh, three, four weeks, four weeks uh, on this out of 10. Okay, basics of communication. The reason that we need to address that particular subject 
in teaching and preaching from the foundation for preaching and teaching because this is the foundation the communication uh, the, the this subject or academy of communication is pretty recent res, recent as as uh, part of modern modern science or modern academics but that does not mean the uh, people did not have communication in the old times I mean Jesus was the the best communicator he did communicate the message of the kingdom the gospel to people in very effective and clear ways so he the Jesus is the the model the model for the communication uh, not only for the Christians but some of those secular uh, scholars academics do study uh, the Jesus uh, you know because he is a, not only unique he had all the principles he you know exhibits exhibits all the principles of the good communication so Jesus as the preacher and the uh, a teacher another way of saying it is Jesus was the good or the best communicator it means preacher and teachers are communicators period basically we are we are the communicators and there is uh, there is effective communication and ineffective communication there's a good communication and there's bad communication there's well-planned communication and poorly planned communication so because of that we need to look at uh, the basics of communication the communication itself is the whole uh, not only whole subject it's a whole department the every college modern college and university does have this department that major it's a major so you you can major in communication that means it's a four-year at least four-year uh, full-time students uh, subject but we're trying to do it in just one lesson uh, or at least I'm trying to do it in, in just one lesson so we cannot discuss all the details but the basics of communication so you can understand what we preachers and teachers are doing as a communicator so good way of starting any academic uh, effort endeavor or academic uh, you know pursue quest is to look at the definition of a term or terms it is always key to have good definition of anything uh, if you're doing uh, an academic work so as a college student you guys best uh, I mean good students always know the definition of the terms that they are using they are using so you should be able to define all the important key terms in this lesson in your own language I mean not I'm, I'm not trying to say if you're Chinese you're you should be able to define this in Chinese not in that sense in your in your own language means using your own thoughts and your your own definition if you cannot if you cannot then try to memorize and uh, uh, you know understand the best defined terms the how the best authorities define that term so I'll try to you know bring some of the uh, definitions from the the so-called authorities or scholars best scholars in this field field means 
the field of communication. So I told you this, this field is so big, so large, that you need to devote uh, at least four years of college uh, study to understand the communication. Mm. Okay, uh, this Meginson, uh, Meginson, a very f one of the famous uh, uh, scholars in the in the field of communication, said, "Communication is the process of transmitting transmitting meanings, ideas, and understanding of." a person or a group to another person or a group. So this definition says there are just at least three elements that you need to look at uh, as uh, he, uh, the Megan's, defines uh, the communication. It's a process of transmitting. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's a process of transmitting. What, what do we transmit? What are the things that transmit? First meaning, or ideas, and understanding. One of them, or all three, or two. So the meaning, ideas, and understanding. Of person to person, person to group, or group to group. So there are at least uh, three uh, different scenario regarding uh, the parties that are involved. So it's a process, it delivers these things or transmit these things and then between subjects, whether the subjects, person or group. Okay, so get the idea definition just you you're trying to get the very essence of uh, the, the definition another definition by newt strom and the keith davis it's, it's in, in a book they they wrote a uh, co wrote a uh, book together communication is the transfer Instead of transmitting, it use uh, they use the word transfer. I mean, it's basically the same thing: transmit, transfer. But uh, you know, try to uh, focus on the word, the uh, the vocabulary, the terms they choose. So transfer of information, information from one person to another. It is a way of reaching others by transmitting ideas, feelings, thoughts, facts, and values. So the purpose, purpose of a communication is to reach others. And uh, it's, it's a way of reaching. How do you reach? Uh, through communication. And uh, in their definition, the subject of the content, content of communication is ideas, feelings, thoughts, facts, and values. So here, as you hear, uh, you see this, there's an interpersonal and non-interpersonal. So when you try to deliver feelings and uh, thoughts and emotions, such as that's personal and when you do that it becomes a interpersonal communication but just the ideas and thoughts and the knowledge the, the then uh, is less personal so there's a personal in uh, communication and non-personal communication so in, uh, as you study the, these uh, definitions you could see some of the differences they made. So in this case, the group is not stated as the, the uh, parties that are involved, but I like you to think of person and group. So it could happen between the group and group, person to group or person to person. 
Yes. So I'll try to just think of this t definition. We'll continue on this subject and next week, uh, week number four. But for today, we'll, I think it's time's up and uh, we'll try to close it. Uh, so thank you for coming to the class and listening and watching this uh, video. Uh, hope that we'll meet uh, face to face uh, soon, but uh, seems like it's gonna take some time. So take care and see you next week.